Hey, welcome to another edition of Champions Perspective. I'm your host, Ryan Smith, also known as Smitty. Uh, season two, episode three, we have with us today our in-game analyst, Tim Kovac. How's everybody doing this week? Oh, probably hey, better than me. Uh, we're doing good, Timmy. We're doing good. We're looking looking forward to uh, all our uh, in-game reviews and uh, looking forward to this week's matchups. Well, hopefully I do better this week than I did last week because I did not pick them very well. I uh, I went one for six last week, so that brings my total uh, to six six out of 12. So six wins yeah. and six, six picked right, six not picked right. Yeah, it's the old crap. Yeah, it was a good week in fantasy football. I'm sure a lot of people lost their um, winners or losers pool because there was a lot of people betting that uh, New England would win, they'd beat the Lions, and also that the Vikings would win, and they both kind of went tits up. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Eh? Like, uh, you know, it just happens, Cole, with two Vikings guys, you know, when they all yep. go down. You and, beat. you know, Davis had Brady, and that hurts. So – um, but we'll see. All right, let's get to it here. All right, <laughs> let's get into my failure of a week. Um, <clears throat> so, you pulling up the games there? Yep, pull it up for our uh, week three recap. All right, we're going to start with Pimpin' a Breezy versus Fake Mustaches there. And as you'll see, uh, Smitty ran away with it. Uh, he had Breeze and Boyd, uh, Tyler Boyd there, light up, the, light up the scoreboard for him. Ben's biggest problem is... Uh, Kenyon Drake really is just not performing well this year. They're not feeding him the ball like they were. For a guy who controlled and dominated the offensive flow so much at the end of last year, you would think he'd be doing much better this year, but he just doesn't have it. So, uh, you know, the Breeze and Boyd combination took you right right to the top. Yeah, you know, I was uh, not going to lie. I was uh, a little scared coming into Monday night. 50-point 50, 50 cushion felt pretty good, but when you got Antonio Brown and Big Ben the Rapist, you know, uh, coming at you. You know, I went to bed at halftime, you know, with my fingers crossed, and uh, Big Ben already had 23 on the board. Yeah, I was hoping uh, I was hoping a little Juju Smith magic, but it was uh, it was uh, beyond a miracle. Uh, but let's see. Next up, we have the uh, Wrecking Crew versus Mac Chase. Oh, on the first one, I actually picked um, Ben to win, so I was incorrect there. Smitty took home the cake. Yeah. Next up, we have Wrecking Crew versus Mac Chase. <clears throat> I picked Pete to win. Uh, Mac came back and won it all. But uh, uh, Monday nighter. Yeah, another Monday night special. Pizza <clears throat> got a team of the walking dead right now. But uh, Mac had Jared Goff who went silly and Mike uh, Evans. They were they were do they're playing very well. And he also got a big game out of Sterling Shepard. Pete has Hogan and Gronk who basically just let him down. The entire Patriots offense was crap this week, so if yeah, you were I, tell you what, I got a little stat about Pete's team here. It says uh, it says three of his guys had over 71 points. And he had 34 points from the rest. Oh, now, oh, I'm not sure oh. if Pete ever got bit by the tie bug last year, but in case he's not aware, we now have the point system, okay, because he's got two quarterbacks on his bench that put up 50 points total. You don't need that anymore, Pete, to beat the ties, okay? We got these decimal points. Just a little PSA. There you go. Next up, we have uh, the Martial Law versus uh, Here Comes My Johnson, which was Cole versus Pete, or Cole versus Ron. <clears throat> I uh, picked Cole to win, and Ron took that one home. And this one. They're both very consistent teams. I would say both of their teams underperformed this week. Like you said, Cole had a couple of Vikings who underperformed. Um, Ron basically just outlasted him. Uh, Cole's biggest problem was A.J. Green got hurt and Stephon Diggs was on the Vikings and they just didn't produce. So, <clears throat> close one that Ron pulled out. You know, those those past two games, uh, Ron was riding the Mahomes train and he trades them. I don't know so much that he underperformed rather than he came back to earth just riding Phillip Rivers. Could be. Rivers is up and down, but they are going to pass the ball. Like, that's, yeah. well, that's what they do. Ron made that bet. He's going to have to sleep in it. Absolutely. Next up, we have the D's Nuts versus Gurley. This is the one game I picked right. Um, Puffer 
also came back down to earth a little bit. Aaron Rodgers is banged up, and he looks it. His knee's kind of wonky. And Todd Gurley's Todd Gurley. It was yeah. enough to get past P or Davis's team, who is the walking wounded. He's got, I don't know, two or three guys who are just hurt. Um, so, you know, Puffer takes that one. Yeah, Tom, Tom Brady just ain't cutting it for Davis. Looks like it's going to be Cousins in there for a little while, which means Brady will be going off this weekend with Josh Gordon. You heard it here. Well, that's the thing. Like, Gordon's in there. Hopefully it stretches. I was going to get into that in a different segment. But oh. Uh, oh. So we'll come back to all that stuff. Roger that. Next up, we have uh, free bill jobs for everyone versus Shag's Lotopus. Brother Bill is off of the loser snide. Oh, no. there. Pulled out a first victory. Andy left like 40 plus points on the bench. Um, again, his team is he's starting to put the, together the lineups a little more consistently and starting to score more points on a regular basis. So he got his first W, and you know who 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 knows where that's going to go from here. Scully's still hurting because he's got Freeman, right? And Freeman's been out. No, no, I got I got Freeman. He's got Julio who's underperforming. Pull up his lineup real quick. Oh, I'll bring it up right here. Oh, Scully's receivers. That's what I my notes say. Like he had three receivers that just I think they were all like single digits. Looking like a skank squad on those receivers here. Yeah, it looks like he looks like he put Freeman in there. I don't yep. think that's a typical play for him. But it's still 11.8. That's not a bad run. You know, he's running Kamara just like New Orleans is. Bilal Powell doesn't help. His running backs are a little weak, but I believe – nope, they're just yeah. weak. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great call. Um, I've been carrying his team, so uh... – Yeah, and Larry Fitzgerald's underperforming, which stinks because the Cardinals, their, their offense is just bad, which is yeah. – you know, Ron Ron took a flyer. He had a backup. He's trying to see what will happen with David Johnson. But they sat him in some red zone touches because he missed a block on a blitz or something I was reading. And it's – Yeah. Uh, that yeah whole he, he missed a blitz mess. to pick up. And there's a crucial third and two. And uh, Kirby Wilson, the running backs coach, pulled him out and said, hey, let's talk about this. And, uh, of course, they didn't get it. Yep. Last but not least, there was the QB carousel versus uh, Tribe Time. So that's me versus Nick. As you can see, Nick was the high point getter this week, and I left a 20-some point disparity on the bench. But it all started, honestly, when Fournette went out all week. He was good, good, good. So I sit Crowell Saturday night. Fournette's not going to play. So my mantra all week's been uh, – what the hell are those called? Projections are for pussies, right? Oh, yeah. What did I do? I followed the projections with the quarterback. I followed the projections with the running back. Richard Penny was the highest projected running back I had on the bench, so I plugged him in, and I went with the highest projected quarterback, and this is what happens when you follow what the so-called uh, analysts yeah. Yeah, the projections do. Go oh. with what you know, and it could have turned out better. But Nick won fair and square, and, you know, I'll see him again. I think week 13 or something, so mm. we'll get this squared away. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This, this week's games have uh, finalized the in-division games, so now we're just playing for uh, for stats, for uh, wins. You know? Yeah. See them again, like you said, until possibly week 13. Uh, I do want to mention, Timmy, that uh, you were warned about the Matty Ice or Matty issues. You can see your brother played Matty. Stafford got the win. But didn't you, you – you said you had to play him after a bad game. He played a good game. Yeah. So – When, last week? Yeah, he had a good game last week. Matt Ryan did? Absolutely. Did you play him? Last week, yes. No, la I don't remember. Last week was a W. I know I didn't play him this week because I followed those stupid-ass projections. Yeah, uh, well. But now I'm glad the fucking stupid – Garoppolo busted his leg. He's just another long line of going to be bust out that followed Tom Brady and got a paycheck because they backed up a New England fucking Don't, don't you be talking for, bad about Brian Hoyer. You know I mean? All right. I'm not talking bad about Brady or Belichick. I'm talking bad about no. all these no, no. tail ass clowns that come out after Brady when he goes down for a little bit and everybody's like, oh, they're going to change the league. Wrong. No, I didn't, say, I didn't say Belichick or Brady. I said Hoya, Brian Hoya. Oh. Yeah, how's he doing? Where's he starting at? Well, he's he's behind Brady, but he started for your Cleveland Browns. He did. Multiple games. And so, he did win multiple games. Very in the Because now we got Baker Mayfield, and we're going to be right. just fine. Go Baker. Go Baker.
All Good right, luck trade for any Browns players. All you homers. Let's uh, yeah. turn this into the week four rundown coming up uh, this week. <laughs> Bless. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, let's start it off there, Timmy. All right, we got Pimpin' Ain't Breezy versus Shags a lot of puss. Uh, this game, I picked Smitty to win. The game is going to come down, I feel, to the New York Jets running backs. They're both starting one. He's got Palal. You've got Crowell. Crowell's – he scores more touchdowns, it seems. So, if he can get into the end zone a few times, you'll be all right. So, as the crow flies on the breeze, Smitty will bring it home. Uh, See what, yeah. what I did there? Uh, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate it. I'm still waiting for your, your Brady to Gordon thing because Gordon's going to make or break me this weekend. And uh, I don't think Freeman so. Devontae Freeman. With Scully's receivers, with Scully's receivers, I think you can chant, you can take some risks, you know? Mm -hmm. I really think it's going to come down between Bilal Powell, whoever scores more points on those Jets running backs. It's going to be a close one, but we'll see. All right. I was wrong all last week. <laughs> Who knows? Good pick. Good pick. Next week, or next week, we have two receivers. I actually picked up, sorry, I put Pete in and get off the side of the overs. Um, I feel they're going to get back to feeding Brown a little bit when I'm actually going to um, – who's the other one? And if you yeah. get those back on, uh, and he's putting your back off the injured reserve butt. Yeah, same post. And uh, he, he did the right thing, and he over Bernard, and uh, mixed with them. So he's doing it on Monday. Um, Ben's thing is, if uh, say I was good with Anna, I'm going to make you win. But then the time final offense is going to come down because of the mobile two and better. So since he's playing around a high stadium, so it's hard to track me up in those spots because they're just big tired. So we'll see. Um, so I'm thinking without Sammy Watkins putting up big numbers, Ben is going to fall there. Sure. But they, they, they just sling it. Everybody gets in Kansas City right now. Next up, we have Gurley, and here comes my Johnson. This is the game of the week. 3-0 versus 3-0. Only one's going to come out alive. My pick is Ron takes it. His team is consistent across the board. Boom, boom, boom. They do very consistent things. Puffer's going to need some, a little bit of help at that flex spot. If his team is a little weak at that flex spot, and uh, I tell you what, I'm going to bring the matchup. Really I'm going to bring the matchup uh, here real quick, Timmy. Sure. And he seems to only have big play receivers as well. So if his if they're catching deep balls and scoring long touchdowns, like Tyreek Hill, Cooper Cup, Deshaun Jackson, like those guys, they're big point getters. Cooper Cup, not so much, but Tyreek Hill and Deshaun Jackson, they're big play guys. So mm -hmm. if they're those long passes and score touchdowns, it's a no brainer. But like I said, Kansas City is going to be slowed up a little, and I feel Deshaun Jackson and uh, Ryan Fitzmagic are going to come back to earth. Corey Clement, as you see, is this flex spot that I'm talking about. He had a terrible week. They're laying, leaning more on Smallwood. Who knows if Ajay is coming back, so Puffer needs to get that sorted out. Aaron Rodgers with the bum wheel. Deion Lewis isn't performing up to par. Todd Gurley is Todd Gurley, though. He's a he's a man. But he is a going against the Minnesota defense, so that's where it's like, eh, my money's on Ron. Yep, good call. Good call. A lot of insightfulness there, Tim. Sounds like somebody's doing their homework. <clears throat> next, right, next we up, have – got uh, Marshall Law versus free bill jobs for everyone. That's right. Um, I'm picking Cole. You know, Cole lost a close one, and he very easily could be 3-0 and instead of Ron there. But uh, his team is like just like Ron's, <clears throat> consistent. Boom, boom, boom. 110, 115, always over 100. Bill, he's improved his lineup, but I still feel he's trying to get a feel of his team and how the matchups are going to work. So, yeah, I know you say projections are for pussies, but this one's got Cole at 106. It's got Bill at 87. Maybe Bill, Bill's going to need some help at his running buy. back spot. He needs some help at his running back spot, but. As long as, it, like I said, it, he's he's fe he's feeling out his lineup, but Marshall's going to take this one. Well, Bill Bill's going on his uh, his streak of not trading anyone again this year. Yep. <laughs> and then then we have these nuts versus tribe time. Now Holbrook, actually, this is the first week of bye weeks too. I think I forgot to mention that. And this should bite Nick in the ass, but you know him being the luckiest man on the planet. He runs up to against Davis, 0-3, who is going to go to 0-4 this week. Yeah. I hate to say it, Adam, but with all those injuries you're facing, you know, you just can't overcome it. <laughs> Nick's going to stream a quarterback this week. 
His number one running back and his starting quarterback are both on a bye, and Davis isn't going to have enough juice to get that W. So yeah. Sounds like Davis needs a trade. <laughs> What's that? Sounds like Davis needs a trade. He needs to do something. He needs those guys to get healthy. Um, if, yes. So I, I picked Holbrook on that one. What's All right, up? Next up, you got uh, Mac Chase versus uh, quarterback carousel yourself. That's me. Uh, I don't know where my notes are on that one, but I'm picking me. Yeah. So I don't have to – I have no quarterback controversies. I traded away a running back to slim down some of my selections on that. Um, all I really need is my wide receivers to come in and do. I need something out of Demarius Thomas, which I think he's going to do. I'm looking at a lot of good matchups. And Mac is – I think he's got a tight end on a bye. Or, no, his tight end's hurt. But he does have Najoku. So that will be the interesting – matchup I feel for him because Najoku and Baker Mayfield you don't really know what you're going to get he can unleash that beast that is Najoku so I still think I'm going to beat him I think I got the points but we'll see yeah good luck hey good luck to all the uh all the guys this week you know except for uh you know Mac Chase and Alan Scully because fuck those guys <laughs> all right Timmy let's start the uh a feature that we have today which we're going to we're going to call, uh, hey, stay off that ledge. <laughs> That's a working title. We're going to work on that. It's, what, it's we're talking about, what we're talking about is the two 0-3 uh, oh teams, Timmy. What are, we, what are we worried about with these guys? Well, or, you got or, he's Nuts, which is Davis, and you got Wrecking Crew, which is Pete. The underlying factor for both of them is injuries, basically. When you look at their team, they're missing two or three key guys on each team. And that's always going to hurt your overall numbers. And we're talking high picks. So it's always tough to overcome those that point loss when your top guys are going down. But as far as Davis goes, like you were saying earlier, he's really hoping that Josh Gordon starts and really helps that Pats, stretches that Pats offense out. Um, that would let Brady start slinging the ball all over the yard again, which would be great. He also needs to get some more of those people healthy. Um, he's got Rex Burkhead still in his lineup. I would find any way I could to replace that guy. I don't think he's going to do anything moving forward. It looks like they're moving toward more towards Sony Michelle. <clears throat> he could also use an upgrade at tight end. I know everybody had high hopes for that Bears tight end, but I hate to say the mentor project, uh, the mentor quarterback, Mitchie Trubisky, he just looks like garbage, man. He doesn't look like he's got it. <clears throat> Maybe it'll take another year, but, you know, it seems like they're short in the field, half of the, like one read, half the field, and he's just – he's got talent on all positions, and it's just he's not getting it done. <clears throat> and last but not least, his defense. He's got the Pats defense. He should start streaming defenses right away. You don't need to keep the Patriots defense. Just pick somebody else up. We'll use matchups and projections and go from there. Yep. Uh, next up, we have Pete. Pete actually made a big splash in the trade market like you were talking about for Mahomes. He did give up David Johnson, but he's on a terrible Cardinals offense like we were talking about, pulled him out of a goal line situation. Just who knows what's yep. going on there. They are starting a new quarterback, so that might help Johnson and everybody else in that lineup. But, you know, Mahomes is Mahomes, and they're projecting him to be an MVP candidate this year, the way they're throwing the ball there. Um, he is also plagued by injury. But, like we were saying, Sony Michelle should start coming on as the feature back in New England, which will definitely help him. And hopefully Gordon will spread out the field for Gronk and Hogan. He's kind of pass heavy. So as their offense goes, so does Pete's team. Yeah, the tough bit, tough thing is, uh, I want to say I've, I've been there in my career starting 0-3 or 0-2, and, 3 or 0 and, 2 and you, you put your head down, and it's tough, you know, because all you want to do is win. But uh, sometimes you got to make that trade you don't want to make. Sometimes you got to pick up multiple guys in a waiver wire, uh, hope one of them pans out for you. You just got to make some moves. I agree. Got to stay competitive. Whatever, what other advice you got for him? You're a, you're a former champ multiple times. Well. Like I just mentioned, the trades, trades and waiver wires, the, the only way you're going to do it. I mean, if you got guys underperforming, look for that look for that needle in a haystack. You only got so many weeks you could wait for guys to get healthy, you know. Like if you had starters in all those spots and you want to stash a guy like Jeffries for four weeks or whoever, you know, when they're hurt, they're hurt. You need guys in your lineup that are going to get you points. You know, you're looking yeah. at, you know, it's, like we said, you don't have to jump off the ledge yet. But you're looking once you start getting to 0 and 4, 0 and 5, you're you're in desperation mode real fast. You want yep. to get ahead of that curve. Yep, I agree. Well, thanks, Timmy. We're gonna 
we're going to end this uh, episode tonight. I appreciate all your time and uh, all your insight. No, no worries. Glad to be here. And l just like last week, if any of you guys want to like be a part of the show, feel free to reach out to Smitty. You know, we could schedule a different time besides Tuesday night if that doesn't work. You know, we'd love to have everybody on here multiple times. You know, come on as a regular. Show up every week. It'd be great to have a big powwow. It'd be awesome. So hit Smitty up. We can get something scheduled, and we'll go from there. Yeah, if you guys are camera shy, you don't want to get onto this, like I said, just send me a video of yourself talking smack for your upcoming your upcoming gig. You know, you feel shitty about 0-3, you, uh, you, you want to cry on some shoulders, send us a video, man. We'll feel for you, you know. We'll laugh at you a little bit, but we'll still feel for you. <laughs> just a so, little. Uh, all right, have a good night, guys. From the great white north. <laughs> goo, 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 goo. <laughs> oh, we got a late night video submission from our own commissioner, Adam Davis, talking about how his season's going. Let's see that video now. All right, so here's the deal. It's a disappointing start to the season. 0-3. Oh 0-3. And oh and While I'm in the same position as Pete Lamb, and that very much uh, is disappointing in my eyes, I didn't like my draft to begin with. I felt it was um, exposable. And Tom Brady has truly been a fucking disappointment. So here's to outside division games. Let's hope I can put something together and get this fucking thing turned around before it's too late. Go Browns. Well, that's a true professional. Real heartfelt. Anybody who plays fantasy football knows the ups and downs of it. And we wish you the best. Keep making it happen.